Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Paige. I am a 27 year old wife and mother of two. And today I am doing what we ate for dinner. Um, you'll notice there's only three recipes. One reason being we usually eat one or two of those meals twice in the week because I'll make enough quantities where we'll have leftovers. Um, in this case, we ate um, one of the meals again, and then I actually kind of combined two of the meals and made like this um, rice bowl out of all of the leftover ingredients. Um, two, we usually always go to our in my in-laws house on Wednesdays, so I never have to cook a meal on Wednesdays. And then three, sometimes I just don't really feel like cooking or having leftovers, so we will go out to eat for either like a cheap meal or we will go out to dinner. Um, so that's why there's only three meals and also sometimes um, the meals I make aren't like um, recipe worthy or there's something I've already posted before so um, these are just three meals and it already was a pretty long video for the three meals so I figured I would just do these three because they were new recipes and um, to show you guys and then we'd go from there so the two of the meals are really easy to do that you can just throw in a crock pot or prep everything beforehand and then just throw on a grill and then the third recipe is um, still very easy but you have to do it like as soon as you're like when you're gonna cook basically so the first recipe is a pulled jerk chicken sandwich with the mango slaw and that turned out really good and like I said that one is super easy to just throw in the crock pot and you can prep everything beforehand I prepped everything in the morning and then served it at night and it was easy delicious and a really good staple for a weekday meal the second meal we did was Asian marinated pork chops with a wasabi um, potato salad and that also you can kind of prep beforehand and then just throw the pork chops on the grill and you're good to go and then the last meal I did was a shrimp black bean poblano pepper back pepper back pepper jack cheese quesadilla and this was probably our favorite recipe of the week and beans, and beans. <laughs> um it was so delicious Why? and rice yep sorry she's right behind the camera as usual but it was so delicious and um this was probably the most extensive like with steps and stuff but it was worth it it was so delicious we served it with some of aldi's uh pineapple poblano um guacamole with some sour cream and i did some flavored rice and it was really good highly recommend that one so stay tuned and you guys can see how i make it and i will be back later at the end oh, of the video boy. First up is this pulled jerk chicken sandwich with mango slaw and it's pretty easy to put together. You're going to need garlic powder, cayenne pepper, onion powder, Italian seasoning, sugar, salt, I use pink Himalayan, and some, I believe that's allspice, pepper, red chili flakes, and cinnamon, and nutmeg, I believe. I'll write down the recipe down below and it makes a lot extra so you can save it if you ever want to make this again. And then we're going to make the marinade that goes in the crock pot and that's just jalapenos, garlic, soy sauce, molasses, lime juice and you're just going to mix to combine all of that together and then in a crock pot you are going to add chicken breasts and a couple chicken thighs season them generously with about three tablespoons of that seasoning mixture that we made and then cover it with the marinade 
and you can either cook it on high for four hours or cook it low and slow anywhere from six to eight hours. Also earlier in the day you can prep the coleslaw and all you're going to need is some sour cream, some mayo, lime juice, fresh cilantro, garlic, finely minced jalapeno, pepper, and a little bit of salt. You're just going to whisk that together and then you can add in your mango and just pre-packaged coleslaw mix. I used one full bag. And then you're just going to stir to combine Cover it and then you can just let this sit in the fridge until you're ready to serve. This is an unnecessary step, but I love making garlic bread for sandwiches, and this is how my grandma taught me to make garlic bread. So you're just going to put butter in a pan with some minced garlic, and you'll see little brown bits. I made some bacon in the day, and my knife had bacon on it, but hey, bacon doesn't hurt anything. Um, and then you're just going to dip your bottoms of the bread in the melted butter and put it on broil in the oven, and just let those get nice and toasted. And it also makes so the liquid doesn't make your bread soggy. And then you're just going to plate it up with your pulled chicken that had been in the crack pot for about 8 hours that day. You're going to top it with your mango slaw. And that is basically it. This turned out really good, had a lot of flavor. Um, super tender and delicious and it will probably definitely be made again at our house. Next night I made these Asian pork chops with a wasabi potato salad and then I also had a little bit of the leftover mango slaw. You're just going to get your potatoes ready in a pot of water with a lot of salt and you get those cooked about 20 minutes or until fork tender and I did red potatoes and while those are cooking you can go ahead and get your marinade ready for your pork chops and all that is is some soy sauce rice wine vinegar and that's the seasoned kind sesame oil, some honey, a couple pinches of red pepper flakes, And then you can whisk that all together to combine. And then in a shallow pan, you can do this anywhere from 20 to 4 hours beforehand. Um, you're going to place your pork chops in the shallow pan and pour over that marinade. And then depending on how long you're going to marinate, you do want to flip them a couple times or maybe just halfway through just so the marinade can soak in and penetrate both sides of the pork chop. 
and then I go ahead and cover it and put it in my fridge and like I said I just go back periodically and flip them in the marinade. Once the potatoes are done cooking you're going to put them in a pan to kind of cool off faster and then I'm also going to put some seasoned rice wine vinegar over the potatoes and then in a mixing bowl I'm going to get the ingredients ready for the potato salad while that cools. So for the potato salad you're going to need mayo, sour cream, some wasabi paste and you can find this pretty much anywhere I found it at Walmart you can find it pretty much most grocery stores will probably have it and that is shallots and uh, green onion and some carrots I just already bought shredded to make it easy on myself then you're just going to mix that together your cooled off potatoes. They can be a little warm but for the most part these were pretty room temperature. And again combine that all together and make sure all the potatoes are covered in the sauce and well incorporated. And then you can store this in the fridge until later in the night when you eat dinner. I cooked my uh, pork chops on the green egg on a high heat of 400 degrees. It was about three minutes per side because they were pretty thin pork chops. And here you can see this is after the first flip. I do flip them or I do rotate them so they have a nice kind of diamond back um, grilling pattern on it to make them more aesthetically pleasing and good looking. <laughs> And then once they're done, you just plate everything up. I had the pork chop, a little bit of the potato salad, and then like I said, I ended up adding a little bit of the coleslaw just because I had it left over and I didn't want to waste it. And then that was one of our dinners for the night. Next up are these shrimp and poblano quesadillas with some black beans in there and pepper jack cheese. These were delicious with some seasoned rice and guacamole and sour cream. So first off, we're going to get a medium high heat and we're going to place our poblano pepper directly on the heat and just keep rotating it until it gets nice and charred. You'll start seeing it blister and when you get a good amount of blister on your poblano you can go ahead and take it off the heat and I put it in a plastic bag and let it steam for a little bit while it cools off and while that happens you can do a rub for your shrimp and that is just salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, cumin, and a little bit of avocado oil to make a little bit of a paste to be able to coat the um, shrimp evenly. And we're just going to mix that all together. And then pour it over the shrimp that I had chopped up a little bit. And I also add some lime juice to season the shrimp. and you're just going to stir in the marinade and this can go on right beforehand or you can let it marinate it doesn't really matter and then once you let the pepper cool a little bit you kinda wanna shake it off and get that skin kinda loosened up and then with gloves I either pull off the skin or kinda use the back of a knife and pull off 
as much skin as I can. And then I remove the seeds. If you like a lot of heat, don't do it. But uh, it, these were pretty hot even with the seeds removed. So I did re remove the seeds and then I just diced them up really finely because they are going inside of a quesadilla. And then I also am cooking up some black beans and um, some rice that I'm going to season with just cilantro and lime after it's done cooking. Um, I do recommend smashing the, the black beans, but we were also giving my daughter some, and I wanted her to be able to grab it easily, so I left it whole, but it makes a good glue for your quesadilla if you smash the black beans. And then in a hot cast iron skillet, I'm just going to add my shrimp and cook that until the shrimp are cooked through and they are pink and opaque and done. And then we start the assembly line. I'm adding some freshly shredded pepper jack cheese, some black beans, some poblano peppers, and I had really mini shells, so I made two quesadillas for each of us because they were tiny, so if you're wondering. And then some of the chopped shrimp, and then at the end I have my daughter's quesadilla, which is just a cheese quesadilla. <laughs> and then I'm going to top with a little bit more of the cheese because it kind of acts as the glue since I didn't smash the black beans. And then just back in that same cast iron skillet, I kind of wiped it down a little bit. Um, you can go ahead and grill your quesadilla, and I cover it with something heavy to kind of keep it flattened and melt the cheese and make sure it all sticks, and then I flip it, put a plate back over it, and let it cook for about two minutes again, and there you go. It turned out so good. This was probably my favorite meal that we made that week, and it was my husband's too, so... This was a highly recommended meal. Alright guys, and that is the video. I hope you guys enjoyed these three delicious recipes. And if you guys want more dinner, like what we ate for dinner videos, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't. I would love to have you guys on my channel. And I guess that's it. We'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.